Okay, Algebra 2, this video lesson focuses on the linear combination method for solving linear systems. So let's get right to that. Here is the three-step description that the textbook gives of how to follow that method. But before I go into that, let me point out that they do say that you can use the substitution method in most any case to solve a linear system. But there are going to be cases where it's just not going to make sense just as it's not always going to make sense to draw um, both lines and see where they cross on a graph, it's similarly not always going to make sense to use um, the, uh, this one method as your only method for solving systems. Um, instead, um, the, the linear combination method is very helpful when neither of the variables on x and neither of the variables on y is 1. In other words, you don't have just plain old x plus y or plain old um, uh, negative 5x minus y, but you have um, coefficients other than 1 or negative 1 in all four cases. You'll see what I mean in just a minute. When this happens, though, linear combination is defini definitely an easier method to use in most every case, and that's why I'm going to actually require you to learn both. So on homework questions, on um, quiz questions, on tests throughout the year, I'm going to expect you to know both these methods as well as the graphing method. There are three steps. This is, um, I think, going to make a whole lot more sense, though, if I jump right to the example and you see it as we go along. But step one, as you're about to see, is that you're going to multiply one of the two equations by a constant. Why would you do that? Well, first of all, look at the equations that you have here. As I said, None of the coefficients on neither of the ones on x or ne and neither of the ones on y is 1 or negative 1. Even if it were negative x minus 4y, it would be easy to solve for x. Now, I'm not saying that it's hard to solve for x here, but what you're going to end up with is um, uh, terms such as 13 over 2, or over down here it would be 8 over 5. And those are not... Um, pleasant ones to have to work with when you go to the substitution step. Look what happens instead if I multiply this top row, that, though, by negative 2, as the textbook suggests. This top row now becomes, well, everything in the top row is doubled, and its sign changes. So it becomes negative 4x, positive 8y, negative 26. This is going to be useful because you're, well, as the name suggests, you're going to combine the lines. Linear combination literally means combine the lines. You're going to combine these two equations, or these two lines. And when you do that, the negative 4x and the positive 4x cancel. So 8y minus 5y becomes 3y. Negative 26 and 8 become negative 18. You simpli simplify this down, you're going to find that y is negative 6. Now I can take that value, and that's that second step. That second step is simply go ahead and combine these two and solve for one of the variables. Now that I have that variable uh, value, I can plug that back in to either of the equations. In this case, I can plug it into either one. So let's see which one they picked in the textbook for step three. They plugged it into the equation 2x minus 4y equals 13. And in place of y, they plugged in that negative 6 that we just found. Let's look back and double check y equals negative 6. That's what they plugged in here for y, negative 6. And so you solve this down, and you're going to find that x equals negative 11 over 2. And so the crossing point is at negative 11 over 2, or another, in other words, negative 5 and a half, negative 6. Now remember, I showed you how to um, check your answers on the graphing calculator, and you'll find if you put those two equations in, uh, that they do actually cross, and the intersection is at, like, like we've solved for, negative 5 and a half, negative 6. So based on that, well, here are the three steps written out, and here's a linear system for you to practice. Go ahead and do that. Hit the pause button, and when you come back, I'm going to show you the answer. Okay, I'm going to assume that you did that. Here is that answer. Negative 2 thirds, negative 7 and a half. Or you, uh, negative 7 and a half. You might have called this negative 3 and a half. If you don't have this answer, don't hesitate to come into class um, and ask about it. Or if you have any questions, um, please bring them to class next time we meet. But I do have to show you another situation, another scenario. Sometimes it's going to be necessary that you multiply both of the equations by constants. Look, let's look at an example. Straight out of the textbook again, there isn't any easy, convenient way to make 7x and 5x cancel with each other, nor negative 12y and 8y. But what I can do 
If I modify both equations so I can make the y's and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, cancel, then it's pretty easy. I'm going to multiply the first equation by 2. I'm going to double every term in the top row. And I'm going to multiply the second row by 3. And look what happens when I do that. The top row becomes, well, the first term, for example, becomes 14x. But more importantly, the second term becomes negative 24y. And when I multiply the, the second row by 3, that 8y becomes positive 24y. So now my, my y's are going to cancel. So what you're doing here is you're looking at the two equations and you're trying to figure out what can I do to set up both rows so that either the y's are going to cancel or the x's. In this case, it was easier to figure out how the y's would cancel. But notice I could have made the x's cancel. I could have multiplied the top row by 5. That would have become positive 35. And the bottom row by uh, 7. And so this would have become negative 35. And those would have canceled. It would have just been bigger numbers and harder to work with. These y's cancel. And it simplifies down and I find x equals 2. Once I know x equals 2, I can plug that back into either of these two equations. And when I do that, I'm going to find that y becomes 3. And these two lines then cross at 2, 3. I can always double check that result by plugging 2 and 3 into both x's and both y's and making sure that I get these two answers. Or by drawing the graph or by um, entering it into the graphing calculator and making sure 2, 3 is the result that I wanted. So here is an example where you're going to have to modify both of the equations. Hit the pause button, and when you come back, I'm going to show you the answer. OK, I'm going to assume that you did that. And you should have found that the two lines cross at 0.22. Now, I do have to show you a little bit more out of the textbook. They give a nice example of a word problem that shows how you would ever actually use this in real life. Step one is to, um, to actually read this paragraph, though. If you haven't already read it in the textbook, hit the pause button now and make sure you understand this story about catering. OK, I'm going to assume that you did that. Now, um, in order to use one of the linear system solving methods um, with a word problem, first you have to extract the two equations that you have in here. And the only reason that you have to extract two equations rather than one to, to get your answer is because, well, you, you can't find the answers to both x and y, or in this case, um, to both uh, pasta and sandwiches um, with just one equation. Uh, but with two, it becomes um, possible. Step one, though, is, as I say, figure out what those equations are. Now, the textbook offers verbal models of both of the equations, and hopefully, as you look at this, and hit the pause button if you need to, if you compare this, these verbal models um, with the paragraph itself, hopefully you'll see how they were able to set that up. And from there, they were able to form these two equations. And then from here, you should be able to apply, I would recommend, the linear combination method so that I can make the s's cancel by multiplying this top row by negative 2. And if I do that, um, well, I, I'll let you look at the textbook and see what the answer ultimately is, for example, 5. I instead want to go, oh, oops, you need to hit that. I want to go back to example 4, which I had skipped, and point out one quick thing, which is, as I said back um, when we talked about um, uh, graphing linear systems uh, in chapter 3.1, there are some cases where you get many or no solution. Many solutions, of course, happens when the lines are superimposed on top of each other. Uh, no solution happens when the two lines are parallel. Let's look at this first scenario here, um, example 4a. And in this case, I would recommend the substitution method because it's easy to solve for x and then to plug this new expression in place of x in the second one. And that's exactly what they've done here. They've solved for, um, uh, they, they've solved for x here and found that this x becomes equal to 2y plus 3. They've plugged 2y plus 3 in place of x in the second equation. And they end up finding that when they simplify everything down, the y's ended up canceling as they did that. And they ended up with the answer 6 equals 7, which is ridiculous and never true. And because it's never true, it means the lines never cross. And they never cross. There's no solution. 
because they're parallel. So no solution in the case of a linear system means they're parallel. I'm just reminding you that from chapter 3.1. Example 4b is easier to solve if you use, use linear combination. If I multiply the top row by 5 and the bottom row by 2, then these y's are going to end up canceling. This is going to become negative 50y. That's going to become positive 50y. And you're going to find, as you solve that down, that um, 0 is equal to 0, that the x's and y's both ended up canceling. And when that happens, when zero, uh, when the when the two values are the same on left and right, that means that you've got infinitely many solutions. It's always true that zero is equal to zero. And infinitely many solutions, remember, means that the two lines are um, are equivalent. Okay. Whoops. Hit it again. That's it. There's your homework. And come in with any questions you have in addition to doing the homework.